Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. Today's video is my epic testing of eyelid primers. I put um, 11 eyelid primers to the test to see which performed the best on older, mature, uh, crepey, saggy, um, less than perfect eyelids. So I think I tested 11 altogether. Nine of them have made it into this video. And nine is a lot. And the reason that there's nine, it was going to be eight, um, but there's two from one brand. And the reason I'm having two from one brand is because one was so bad and the other is the winner. I tried to level the playing field for everything by doing the following. I applied them all in the exact same way. I applied them all with my fingertips. I used the exact same eyeshadow for all of these, the same colors, applied on the same areas, in the same way, with the same brushes. <laughs> the photos I took were from right away when I first applied the product, from midday, and then from the end of the day. So we'll be able to see how the eyeshadow looked when it was first applied, um, you know, how it wore throughout the day and what time it kind of failed. The other thing I noticed is that no one my age should be showing close-up pictures of their eyelid skin uh, repeatedly in any video. My eyelids look hideous and <laughs> please forgive all the wrinkling. I tried to close my eyes so that I didn't pull in at the corners, but no matter what I did, no matter how I relaxed my eyes, I couldn't do it. It's just the function of being this old. But it's interesting, <laughs> this old, I know you guys hate it when I say I'm old, but I am 52, so what are you going to do? Um, but it is interesting to see how these products that probably if you're under uh, 45, it, it probably doesn't matter which one of these you use. They probably all work great on younger eyelid skin. There are some problems that are particular to being older that a lot of these bring out. Um, so where the skin is not perfect, it's crepey, it's saggy, it's wrinkled. Some of these accentuate the wrinkles, some actually decentuate the wrinkles, some of them clump up on the dry skin. And just for a point of reference, I applied the exact same eyeshadow with no eyelid primer to show you what the difference was between using a primer and not using a primer. Um, I did pick an eyeshadow that I knew would uh, deteriorate quickly and not do well, so it's sadly my Sonia Kashuk Ion Neutral Palette. I used three shadows from there, the exact same ones. One is a uh, pale flesh tone, one's a medium brown, and one's kind of a purpley taupe because I wanted to get a little variety in the color, but I had to wear so, it so often I didn't want it to be something crazy that I couldn't just, you know, go to the grocery store and feel comfortable in. So that is sort of the parameters of how I set this video up. Looking at the pictures, I think it's going to be okay. Sometimes when I took it in the morning and my room was brighter and my camera didn't use the flash, the eyeshadow colors look really pale and pinky. And then when I took the pictures later at night and I, I had the flash on, they look really brown and purple and dark. So just know that it is the same eyeshadow. It's just the lighting conditions in the room. It's very hard to control. So I do my best. I am doing this at home, but it is an interesting experiment and I think it does uh, reveal some things about some of these products. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first product that I'm going to talk about, and therefore the worst, is the NYX eyeshadow base. This actually comes in three colors. It comes in this uh, nude color, it comes in white, and I think there is a clear one. I tend to go for the nude colors because I have a lot of discoloration on my eyelids, I have a lot of veins, and I have a lot of freckles, so I kind of like to put on almost like a a neutral base to put my eyeshadows on. So whenever there was a chance to buy one of these in a color, um, a nude color, I went ahead and did it. Anyway, this retails for $7 at like, you know, Target and CVS drugstores. Uh, this is hypoallergenic and cruelty free. I thought it went on really nicely. It's kind of thick, so it does a good job at covering those veins and freckles. It was tacky when it was first applied, and so I preferred to wait a minute for it to dry down a little bit. It was a little difficult to blend. It seemed to make the colors turn kind of muted, and this one is in last place because of the wear. This one creased really badly, and the colors all wore off pretty quickly. Uh, I don't think this one, the eyeshadow, lasted before it creased for more than four to five hours, which was not great. So that's it for this one. There's no point in talking about it anymore since I'm not recommending it and it was the worst one, so let's move on. All right, the second to the worst one is one that I really wasn't going to include in this video because I didn't want to have two uh, primers by the same brand, but the pictures were so dramatic at how 
badly a primer can work that I wanted to include it anyway. This is the Tarte Colored Clay Eye Primer. It comes in a stick, so I liked it that it was like a different delivery method from all the others. But my problem with this one was not so much the wear on it, but the lack of blendability. So this is another one that's like a flesh tone. You put it on. It did do a great job of covering over my freckles and my veins, and it was easy to blend in. You know, it didn't get crusty or anything, but you can see in this picture that it really caused the eyeshadow to not be blendable at all. So where I put that line of purple, it stayed a line of purple above my crease. It wouldn't blend at all. So where you put it is exactly where it stayed. And then the wear was awful as well. So I'll just bring in quickly the wear pictures and then we'll move on because I didn't really want to talk about this one too much. The next product is the Urban Decay Primer Potion in Eden. This retails for $20. And this is the flesh colored version. There are four different versions of the Primer Potion. There's also an anti-aging one, which I had used and reviewed previously. So that's not going to be in this video. But I got to say, I found it to be just as disappointing as this one. So, the problem I had with it is that it settled on my little, what do they call it, alligator skin at the inner corners of my eye, and it looked crusty. But the first couple of colors that I applied blended really nicely, but when I put on the darkest color, it's like it had had enough. And instead of blending, that one just sat on the surface in, like, speckled. It's weird. It didn't blend at all. Uh, for the cult favorite, I don't get it. It didn't work for me, and so that one is at the bottom of the pack. All right, also in the bottom, so didn't do very well, is the Smashbox Photo Finish Lid Primer. Uh, this retails for $21, and it comes in a universal warm beige color. So um, this one has a doe foot applicator. I love the doe foot applicators. So it goes on creamy, and it dries down to a really nice matte finish that covered up the freckles and the veins. So when I first applied the eyeshadow, I thought it looked great. Um, the colors were really defined, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be the winner. Look how fabulous the colors look. But unfortunately, <laughs> um, it wore off unevenly. There was a little bit of gathered up uh, eyeshadow in my crease by the end of the day. So the wear wasn't quite as long as I was expecting, but, you know, it wasn't a total loss because it did look good in the beginning. Now we're into the middle of the pack. These two are good, but not perfect. So the first one of the good, but not perfect is the e.l.f. eyeshadow primer. This retails for a dollar. So this is why I love doing these testing, because I love finding out that this e.l.f. product for a dollar works better than this Urban Decay product for $21, or this Smashbox product for $22. <laughs> this is available at Target and wherever e.l.f. cosmetics are sold. Uh, it also has a doe foot applicator. This one was really easy to apply because it's semi-sheer, so it didn't completely cover over freckles or um, the veins in my eyelids, but uh, it did a nice job. It was a little hard to blend at the corners. The eyeshadow uh, went on fairly easily and blended smoothly, but I didn't really find that this did a great job at showing off the colors or enhancing the colors. But it was fairly long-lasting. I don't think I had any creasing or any gathering of the makeup in the crease. From that standpoint, you know, it's, it's a pretty good product, especially if you're going for a very subtle kind of day look. Also in the middle of the pack, this is one of my longtime favorites that you've seen me use hundreds of times in almost all of my eyeshadow tutorials. This is MAC Paint Pot in Painterly. Um, this is kind of a pale, mauve pinky, fleshy tone color. This retails for $21, and it may be unfair. This one is rather old. I should really replace it with a new one, and maybe it wouldn't have gotten crusty, but I've been using this for so long, and I do love this product, so I'm not knocking it. Um, but the performance, I gotta say, was not perfect on it either, which I was surprised to see. It's very thick and it dries very matte. So on our older eyelids where they're crepey and stuff, it doesn't always make your eyelids look so great. It almost accentuates the crepiness kind of at the inner corner and the wrinkliness, but it does grab and hold the color so well. And the blending on this is beautiful. One thing about this is that it's really hard to remove. Once it's on there, it is really on there and it is not going anywhere. It's not migrating around and the color stays and stays true. So that's why this is in the middle of the pack. It wasn't 
perfect, but it's still a product that I love, and once I replace this one, you'll probably be still seeing it showing up in my videos because I, I do love it. I, I really can't knock it. All right, now we're into the top three products. The um, third and not quite the best, but pretty good, was this eyeshadow primer by Milani. This retails for $5.99. It is in a squeezy tube. It's a little on the yellow side. Don't know if you can see it right there. You do have to be careful when putting it on though to be sure to blend it in at the edges. I did end up with it a little clumpy in here and a little bit clumpy in at the inner corners as well. The eyeshadow goes on very nicely and blends really easily. It seems to make the eyeshadow colors a little bit more defined, um, but yet they're all blended together beautifully. Once it's on there, this stuff is on there. I could not get it off. I took off the eyeshadow, all my mascara, everything. It was still on there after two washes. So I was like, wow, that stuff does not budge. So from that standpoint, this is a great product and at a great price point. All right, these are the last two that are pretty much tied for first place. But for the win, I am going to give it to the Tarte 360. So we will talk about uh, the Too Faced Shadow Insurance first. The Too Faced Shadow Insurance retails for $20. It's in a squeezy tube and it is also a flesh colored gel. So this one, I have it out right here. We spread it. It is semi sheer, so not really opaque. It's right there. Okay. It doesn't completely hide the freckles or the um, veins on the eyelid. It just glides on the eyelids very nicely. It doesn't um, clump up on that alligator skin, look cakey or crusty anywhere. You don't have to really worry about, you know, blending, doing a lot of blending at the edges. So very easy to apply. The eyeshadows went on perfectly with this. The blending was terrific. The color separation and color enhancement was really great. And the wear was terrific too. This looked just almost as good at the end of the day as it did at the beginning of the day. This also had the effect of smoothing my eyelids, where some of the other ones, because they were so dry and matte, they actually made my eyelid wrinkles look worse. The reason that this isn't coming in in first place is because when I go to squeeze out the product, it's always separated inside the tube, and what I get out first is a big glob of oil. From that standpoint, I feel like I waste a lot of it. And for two products that are in about the same size tube for about the same amount of money, I'd rather have the one that doesn't separate. So that's why this one came in second, and the first place product is the uh, Tarte Clean Slate 360 degree creaseless 12 hour smoothing eye primer. This retails for $19. This is a waterproof 12 hour smoothing formula. This is not a flesh tone product, so it didn't do anything to hide my freckles or veins, but because it is sheer and um, transparent, there are no problems with blending it around the edges. It also didn't um, stick to that alligator skin, making it look um, crusty and gross. Uh, applying the eyeshadows with this one is a um, pleasure because everything just blends out so beautifully but the colors stay true and separated. I felt like it helped to accentuate the colors. The wear was terrific. There was no settling in uh, my eye crease. It wore for a good 12 hours without wearing off and the best part about it was that it made my eyelids look smoother <laughs> and that is something that I can really get behind. The one thing that I can say for all of them, no matter if it was the worst or the best, is that they did improve the wear of the eyeshadow versus no primer at all. So some primer is better than no primer, definitely, but within the whole world of primers, there are definitely ones that are better than others. These are the three that really helped the makeup to blend better, wear longer, and help my eyelids to actually look a little better. So I um, am very happy with the outcome. I'm happy that I have a couple of products that I can use now and know with confidence that my eyeshadow is going to look good for 12 hours and beyond. And so I'm glad I did this little experiment. It was quite a fun experiment to do and I really had a great time testing them. Okay, that's it for today everybody. As always, thanks for watching. I really appreciate your time. So take care and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.